and call the meeting to order at 6.03. Okay. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? Oh, there's JC. Welcome. Okay. Uh, no adjustments. Then uh, we'll go to the consent agenda to approve the minutes from November 6th and from Friday, November 17th. Oh, we're approving um, the endowment committee's minutes. We don't, as a committee, don't have to uh, approve them. We get to do it as the board. No, we should Perfect. do that in committee. In committee. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so then we will... Um, Remove. I'll talk to Christy a reminder. Okay, so 3-2 will be moved to the Endowment Committee agenda for their next meeting. So we are only looking for a motion to approve the minutes from Monday, November 6th. Last regular. I move. Motion's been made by Bill to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Robert. Is there any uh, discussion? Great. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Great. So moved. Uh, is there any public comment? Do we have any public um, joining us virtually? No? Okay. Great. No here. We'll move on to board comment then. Okay. Great. Right, well, if there's no board comment either, we'll move right on to the celebration of learning then, the best part of the meeting. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce Bonnie Bourne, or reintroduce Bonnie Bourne, our uh, SUI math coach, and uh, our kindergarten first grade teacher in Rochester, Miss C, or Megan, um, to talk a little bit about Bridges Workplaces with you guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, the math program that the RSUD schools use, Stock Rochester and Stockbridge, is um, referred to as Bridges. It's a Bridges program. Um, it has three major components to it. Uh, one of those components is uh, problems and investigation. The other one is number corner. And the third component is uh, workplaces. And those three components are designed to work together in, a, in an integrated system. Last year, those of you that were on the board uh, will remember that Hope came and did a presentation on Number Corner. And so tonight, Megan and I will talk a, a bit about workplaces. Um, and then at some other point, we'll schedule with Lindy the, a, a presentation around uh, problems and investigations. And then at that point, we'll have presented all three of the components. Um, just a little bit about sort of the, the goals of our math program before I move into speaking specifically about bridges. We, we really have two large goals. There are many sub goals under that, but two large goals in our math program is to develop in youngsters um, this positive identity as a doer of mathematics. Someone who can do math, who can use math, who can consume math, um, and have a very positive uh, sense of that. Uh, the, other, the other goal is to develop in youngsters really a deep sense of math reasoning, which encompasses number sense, procedures, um, problem solving, those kinds of, of things. Um, but those are the two things that we continually focus on when we're working with youngsters in the area of mathematics. Um, the big one is the, the positive math identity. Um, I'm sure a number of you have heard this before. We hear it quite frequently. Um, people saying, well, I'm not a math person. I, I'm not a math person. Um, I don't do math. I'm not a math person. And um, once that starts creeping into our thinking, it almost guarantees that we're not going to be particularly successful using mathematics as a, as a tool. So one of the things that we try and do every single day is to help youngsters build a positive sense of math. I can do it. I can figure it out. I can use it. So um, that's sort of the, the, the big goals. Um, workplaces that we're going, to, uh, we're going to show a little bit of tonight, they're actually like uh, math stations, math activities. They are um, uh, little tasks, little problems, little games that give youngsters the opportunity to apply the math concepts that their teachers have shared with them in the problems and investigations units, the more teacher-directed in instruction. Um, 
And the whole purpose of math workplaces is to give kids lots of opportunities to practice the kinds of skills that they need to be able to um, own in order to really see or use, uh, use math as a tool. Um, so the purpose is um, of workplaces is to give youngsters concrete models that help them understand the concepts that underlie procedures in mathematics. I know it's, a, it's often a, a, a debate about new math and math facts, et cetera, and I work into every time I'm speaking with a group, <clears throat> I, I really make sure I always say these three things. Right answers matter. Uh, math facts matter. Kids have to know their math facts. If they don't know their math facts, they're not going to be particularly successful in mathematics. And there's no such thing as new math. <laughs> the math is the math. The math that we're teaching now is the math that was taught 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or in my case, 40, 50 years ago. It's the same math. What we do now is we're teaching math more for meaning versus uh, memorization out of context. That's what used to happen a, a lot. And it looks different because now we're engaging youngsters in different types of activities. But rest assured, answers matter, math facts matter, and we're teaching the same math that, that, that all of us learned. Um, the other thing about workplaces that I think is, is particularly positive is it gives us, it gives youngsters actually, not us, gives youngsters opportunities to develop skills outside of math. There's a great deal of sharing that has to go on. There's a great deal of problem solving. There's responsibility for getting out the materials, picking up the materials, making sure the materials are going back in the right place so that when I come and get that work PlayStation tomorrow, everything's not you know scattered hither, thither, all around. And there's a great deal of both uh, cooperative and collaborative work that um, is built into workplaces. Megan doesn't go around to her class and say, OK, Lindy and Jamie, you will get along, and you two will get along, and you two will get along. We just go to a workstation, and we have to figure out how is it that we're going to interact in a positive way so that we can both enjoy doing this activity or playing this game that, by the way, is furthering my understanding of, of the math concepts that I'm, that I'm learning as a kindergartner, first or, or second grader. Um, the other thing that workplaces do is they allow teachers um, to be able to do what's called observational assessment. So if we're watching um, Amy doing, if Megan's watching Amy do an activity, and she sees that she's making the same error over and over and over again. That gives Megan the opportunity to sit down, kind of sit right next to her, point out, how about if we thought about it this way? Do you think we could think about it this way? What do you think would happen if we change this versus that? So there's an opportunity for on-the-spot uh, correction of misconceptions. There are some misconceptions that are more uh, deeply embedded, that are, that are more strongly held in the youngster's thinking. So Workplaces also allows um, Megan to look at around the classroom, look at who's doing the different workstations and say, okay, I need to, I need to grab this child and this child and this child, and I need to do more in-depth instruction with them. So for the next two or three days, while other kids are at their workstation, I'm going to be at this workstation with these three kiddos straightening out this misconception. So before teachers are moving on and trying to build on top of not a particularly solid foundation, workplaces gives them the opportunity to say, okay, I need to do a little bit of reteaching right here. This is a moment when I need to grab these three kiddos and, and reteach. Um, and then I think certainly a, um, an important attribute of workplaces that we can't overlook is that it just uh, they just provide a enjoyable, fun atmosphere in which kids are learning their mathematics. They're working hard to understand why do you group these ten things together and leave this one thing over here by itself? Why do you need nine more to make these two groups of ten? Um, so kids are working, um, they're working diligently. They actually enjoy. When you ask kids who have had been in the Bridges math program for you know a period of time, what's your favorite part about math? They almost always say workplaces because they actually see these activities as games, as fun things to do, while at the same time strengthening their mathematics. 
So we're going to play one. We're going to take, uh, let me stop for questions first. Is there any questions before we do a little play? Yeah. Um, is workplaces uh, a format, a technique of bridges, or are they, is it a way to make bridges work for each one of our students? Um, it's actually both, Bill. It's a component of bridges. And teachers can personalize the workplaces. There's five, six, seven workplaces that come out at any given time. Teachers can differentiate those workplaces for individual students, for individual students. So if you have a particular need, you might get assigned this workplace. If I have a particular need, I might get assigned that workplace. Is that a tool that we use in direct instruction and other, in other uh, academic or social emotional um, instruction? It's during an instructional block. It's not necessarily part of direct instruction. So it's part of a, so if a group of kids is with Megan for direct instruction and literacy, another group of kids might be working on a targeted skill gotcha. right. independently. Gotcha. And also during the lesson, so I'll, I'll teach the workplace during the lesson, so you'll learn a whole part in the unit, and then I'll teach the workplace. We'll work through it together, make sure that everybody understands it, and then they can go back and do it, and it's a choice on their workplace folder that they have to do three times. Well. Thank it's you. funny because when you said that, it's um, that's their favorite part is workplaces for sure. Because I love when they're like, "Is this almost over?" Because I really want to do workplaces. They just have so much fun that they don't even realize that they're learning math. Uh, I guess um, in uh, for for the kids, do you find it a big obstacle with their parents having identi um, identified uh, that oh they're not math people? That they're is there a, a big problem with the parental influence on the kids. There's there, there's still a good amount of that, um, and it's some it goes something like this. I was never particularly good in math. I did okay. She'll be fine, or he'll be fine. Um, some parents are are um, a little bit scared of math. They're not sure they can help their children do the math, and and they can, but they kind of avoid it a little bit. So so that is the piece. I certainly wish we'd send a different message that math is fun and everybody can do math. Uh, yes. We're working on that. <laughs> Any more questions? All right. Well, we're going to, do you want us to? Sure. Should we use this little table here? Sure. sure. All right. So I brought one that is very similar to, I have one from kindergarten and one from first grade, and it kind of shows you how they move from one workplace to another the next year. So we have these little beans that one side is red and one side is white. So for the kindergarten workplace, this is the sheet that they receive. And what they do is you take 10 beans. I'm just going to point this up. Numbers one through 10. Yeah, yeah. And we're also working on correct number formation while we're at it. It is oh, a great yes. Seven, okay. eight, nine, 10. I'll let you shake those up and see what okay. comes out for you. So you're looking at the red beans that came up. So just for kindergarten, we're only looking at the red ones. So they will identify that they will count out the three red or just identify that there are three here. And then they will find them on the board and trace that number. So once they fill three columns, they've finished the workplace. But as you shake up the beans, you'll get all different numbers and all different combinations. And then when you change to first grade, we'll do 10 because we already have the beans. These are hard to pick up. I know. <laughs> so they're counting, but they're also working on writing skill yes. and identifying what that number and looks like. And correct number formation too, yeah. yeah. The other thing they're working, I'm glad you brought that up, Amy. The other thing they're working on is a fancy word. It's called subitizing, but it's important in mathematics. It's the fact that a youngster can look at that and tell me how many there are mm -hmm. without going one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it's teachers who are uh, skilled and familiar, like Megan is. They're interjecting these skills all the time in these in these activities. So I just wanted to point out that when you asked about the three red. Oh, look at that! I'm going to shake them. Out. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Well, it's funny that you do that because when they start this one, they'll put a star at the top of the column that they think will happen most frequently, okay. and that's how you win the, the workplace. Technically, we don't like to say who wins or loses. You're always winning when you're playing math. But, right. 
Um, so they have, they'll count out how many red. So that is the first number that they will look for. So they have four red. So we're gonna look for the equation that has four on the top. And then they will count out to make sure one, two, three, four, five, six. And they will look for the four plus six here. Okay, and yeah. then they will write it above. Write the answer or write the equation? Well, they will write the equation yeah. above. Okay. And they will continue to do so in these columns. And you can play with a partner or you can play by yourself. Mm -hmm. And also there's a challenge version of this where when they play, someone can cover the white. So if you're looking at these, one, two, three, four, then yeah. you ask them how many more are under my hand if there are 10 total. Right. So. Very cool. And um, the kids are picking which activity, like they have a list that they can do, or you're, you're telling them today we're gonna do the counting beans one? Um, There's five or six uh, workplace activities for every unit of study. Okay, and every I can unit. pass this around too. Okay. So they learn them throughout the unit. Um, and then they are able to choose the, the ones that are available that they have learned. So we'll I go see. through um, the folder and they take their folders out and then they'll check off the one that they've done. So there are three um, boxes on there that they can check them off. Megan can also assign me to a workplace. She can say mm -hmm. sometime in the mm -hmm. next two days, Bonnie, I want you to hit that workplace with someone. Mm -hmm. And she's sending me there for a specific reason. She's seen some things, seen some misconceptions she wants me to work out or straighten out. What I also love about workplaces too is when they work together, sometimes they'll learn new things from each other. So they will learn to do certain counting or they'll learn to just look at a pile when their friends are doing it yes. or they'll learn certain things that they didn't necessarily grasp from my lesson but they learn from each other which is great. Just working together. And, and what the research tells us is that um, learning facts in this context comes more quickly. Mm and it solidifies more quickly than trying to learn them out of context. So mm -hmm. in other words, today we're going to work on our fours. So four plus one is five, four plus right. two is six, four plus. It doesn't, there's nothing in here to stick it to. Mm -hmm. But if I know that Megan and I are playing this game, and if I know that yesterday, three different times, I missed four plus three, I'm really going to be focusing on four plus three, because I really want to fill up this column. Yeah. So there's a context, there's a reason for why I, I want to hold on to four plus three. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And uh, just so you guys can see, this is the workplace bin. So kindergarten and first grade have separate workplaces um, and they will go to their specific bin to pull out in this folder, they have all of the sheets. I also put some in their individual workplace folders because they will have one of their own. I was just gonna show them. This is what one of the game boards looks like. And this is a race to the tower <laughs> to get them filled in and they have their own that they can fill in with, the, with a similar, so the equation goes in with the game. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, building equations and using various math manipulatives. Youngsters are doing and seeing far more equations at, at earlier grades than they ever saw before. They're That's starting right. to write them, they're starting to talk about them, they're starting to uh, create them from different scenarios they see out of you know things like that. You can definitely tell they're having fun. They have indoor recess. They want to play the workplaces, <laughs> <They wanna do laughs> workplaces. <laughs> which great. is very cool. <laughs> that's great. Um, so that's it. I don't know if there are other questions or. Oh, that's really exciting. And thank you so much for bringing that. Um, thank you for you having us. Wow. Thank you for having us. And that's wonderful. I love getting an insight to what's happening in the classroom, mm -hmm. and that's really exciting. So, go ahead, Bill. Yana and. You're making a difference. You're making a real difference when you look at our Track My Progress uh, valuations um, from uh, spring of 2023 <laughs> to spring of 2022, or the fall of 22. Um, enormous gains in math. And math was one that we heard was the, the, the biggest hill to climb or swamp to swim, everything else like that. And huge, uh, and not only was it impressive because the average for mathematics of the sixth grades was, was three years in, in a year, was that uh, the performance here in our said was the highest of the supervisory union. Um, we looked at the test this fall and there's issues about summer slag and, or, or slag and everything else like that, but again, 
um, and those challenges don't just disappear. But you're doing you're you're doing it, and the results of the of the of the, the measurements uh, demonstrate that, and that's uh, really really heartening because the, the the core of it is that our kids need to be able to compute, and if they can enjoy and then use and utilize and and decide to to go after those 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 careers and that sort of thing all starts with what you're doing and uh, so it's very very heartening thank you well thank thank you for that there's there's a there's a whole lot of people in this effort you know we have wonderful teachers in our district no question about that but support that Jamie and Anda and Lindy have brought to the area of math um, we wouldn't be doing this kind of work without the support they bring to it. it and the board. It takes money to get the, the programs and the materials and the professional development. So it's really just everybody saying math is important. What are we going to do about it? So, well, and you've been, we you've been you. the key leader. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, Pat or JC or uh, Cynthia, do you have uh, any questions or comments for um, our presenters? No, I just think it's great. I um, it's interesting to me because I'm watching all their come home and with some of the math and and being and, and everybody's talking about before that everybody was like the new math, the new math. So I was kind of like, what am I in for? But <laughs> I see that like, you know, I could probably get it, understand it too. I I, I thought you know I was in for a new, a, new, a whole new thing, foreign thing, but. He really loves math, and so I think it's that's you know pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. My kid coming home and just loving, loving mm -hmm. math. So it's neat, and thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Excellent. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. You. All right. So that's great. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the reports to the board. We'll do the superintendent's report. Here, guys. So I'll do this, and then I'm going to jump in with Granville Hancock, and then I'll be back. OK. Um, but uh, you have my report at hand. We're going to talk a lot about um, Act 127, uh, specifically the impacts in a forecasted significant drop in the yield. Mm and what that's going to be forecasted to do to tax rates across the state. Um, I did send out a community letter that had included an Act 127 fact sheet. That was great. Uh, and the Act 127 fact sheet's also, it's, you can't go to the SU website now and miss it. it it's the first thing you oh, see okay. um, at the SU website. And so I would su I'd suggest that board members take some time to really review that. I, I do think that that helps break down each component of Act 127 in regards to how the, you know, we are no longer in equalized pupils. It's long-term average uh, daily membership in regards to a wait over two years. It breaks down how pupils are weighted different now. Um, and then the thing I've been talking about was this notion of these 5% caps and what I, I was predicting it might do to the yield. Um, and the yield, um, is really looking to contribute, um, you know, double digit increases to tax rates at the moment. Uh, the governor came out last week and talked about an 18 and a half percent um, tax rate increase across the state. When he's talking about that, he's talking about the yield because that's the figure um, that funds the, the ed fund and makes certain the ed fund receives enough funding. So we will talk about what we know now. We'll talk about. Um, how the long-term um, average daily membership weighting uh, does equal, it does increase our pupils by quite a bit in our sud. The problem is the yield uh, dropped more than those, those increase in, in pupils contributed in regards to trying to provide more tax capacity. Um, and so we'll, we'll walk through that tonight during the tax sheet within your budget. Uh, Lindy can talk to you about what the, the current budget has in place. There's not really much personnel changes from the, the prior draft um, in this one, but, but Lindy and Tara started working on um, some changes in regards to your actual like supply lines and things of that nature and, and based on actuals and things of that nature. Okay. Um, and then when we get to the budget tonight, uh, we'll talk about we're carrying a 10% figure right now for tuitions. Um, 
because we don't know what announced tuitions will be yet. Okay. But we, we increased it by 10, and that number's not arbitrary. Uh, what we're hearing is baseline expenditure budgets are anywhere from 10% to 20% mm -hmm. in surrounding districts. Yeah. Um, and so we felt like probably we needed to expect that folks are going to increase tuitions by pretty significant amount be, to, you know, to increase their revenue in, in order to, mm -hmm. to support our students at that those level of increases. So One thing that's uh, to our benefit is that by the time we go to vote on this, we'll we know, will have solid we'll numbers. We'll have real solid numbers yeah, okay. in this district. So. Mm -hmm. um, I just I wanted to it's, put that all out there in case you started talking about the budget and I happen yeah. to be with okay. Granville Hancock, um, that we are giving you what we the best assumptions we have right mm -hmm. at the moment, right, okay. based on the figures that we do have. Um, and so, I, you know, I would say that my report, the big thing other, aside of all the other good stuff we have happening across the SU that I talked about in here, um, is really just, you know, budgeting and Act 127, the yield. And, I, and I, my sense is that this is going to be a very busy legislative session. Mm. Um, and then finally, before I take questions, um, the governor has had, the state board did forward um, three candidates for interview for the secretary of ed position. Those names were not released. They're not, they're not public. Um, the governor can decide to accept one of the three finalists uh, to appoint as secretary, um, or he could uh, reject all three and ask the state board to go back out. Um, I, I did expect that we'd have an announcement prior to the holiday break, so stay tuned on that. Mm. And I'll take any questions folks may have. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Superintendent regarding his report? We obviously will be talking about those other pieces a little bit later. I guess the question I had was, uh, when the, uh, the governor hit back strongly on the December 1st letter and what that meant, and. And it's just awful. But when I read the, the quotes from the legislative leaders, they're saying it's early. We've got some tools in our backpack, and uh, so let's not um, throw in the towel um, to to the extent that we're going to lose the ability to provide quality education in the state of Vermont. And so, have you heard anything at all from? Um, the, the tidbits from the legislature on how they're approaching this? Uh, the, some of the, le the legislature, our members of the legislature that I've spoken to, I, I think there was uh, some folks that didn't fully comprehend what Act 127 yeah. was going to do. Um, and the idea of these caps in not losing, I mean, it's a bit of a perfect storm. Um, <laughs> federal funding is going away. We put some arbitrary tax caps, right, on districts that we're going to lose some pupils. The, their budgets are projected to be up in the upper teens. Um, and so I don't think there was necessarily the foresight that what that meant was that the Ed Fund was going to be underfunded. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what I think the legislature is going to need to look at is how could they diversify funding for the Ed Fund. Um, and that's something I think they need to look at. One of the things that I would say, Bill, that I was disappointed is, is, is that the non-homestead rate did not even come remotely close to how much they dropped the yield for mm -hmm. homestead rate. Mm -hmm. um, and so the non-homestead rate is only projected to be up like five and a half cents. And what you're going to see tonight for a local tax rate, or tax rate's up 22 cents. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem right to me. Um, and so I think that's something the legislature needs to take a look at. Um, to help balance out that ed fund uh, i think that's a that's a significant step they could take and um you know i was talking to a board member earlier today and you know and i think here's the thing is that health insurance is up 16 and a half percent uh federal funding is going away the needs of schools around what federal funding was helping support across the state mm -hmm. i think some folks have done a better job of budgeting that in locally over time, and some have not, and now they're looking, they, they realize they still need those resources. And so that's taking major hits to local district expenditure budgets. And we have school districts um, uh, around us who settled some con teacher contracts and, 
and saw pay raises go up pretty significant, around like almost you know 24, 25 percent increases over three years. Um, all that money has to come from somewhere, um, and we have a statewide ed fund. I think the key for us too locally is reminding folks that when we go to our district voters for approval, that they that this is a statewide ed fund, mm. right? Like a big chunk of our dollars all go to Montpelier, then funnel back out to us. Mm -hmm. And so when we, you know, we certainly our local voters support to educate our such students. Um, but beyond that, there are decisions made in all of our surrounding districts that can impact our tax rate. Mm -hmm. And the way we feel that is through the yield. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, Bill, there's this whole other piece to infrastructure across the state and PCB testing. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention. We did complete PCB testing here um, at, at Rochester and Stockbridge this past weekend. Just Rochester. Oh, Stockbridge. just Rochester. Stockbridge wasn't done? No, not yet. Okay. Well, it's upcoming. It's upcoming. Um, and we should have those results probably within the next six weeks or so. They haven't, I mean, the, that's the other thing the legislature is going to take up is they don't, they have not fully funded remediation for that yet. If you remember, they put away a little over 30 million in Burlington, Burlington School District got 16 out of that $30 million pot. And um, there's, there's what I'm hearing, uh, you know, from putting my feelers out, there's, there's quite a bit of abatement that needs to be done across the state. Right. Um, so anyway, it's going to be a really interesting upcoming session. Right, I'm going to run to G Hutton. and I'll okay. come back. Great, thank you. thank you. Yeah, we'll move on to the principal's report. Uh, so you have my report in front of you. He I'd forget, forgotten to put the PCB testing um, in there as one of the building things that had happened. Um, that was Friday to Saturday. Um, so it's done when kids aren't in the building, they come and set up and then they, I don't know, it's like a camera looking thing. It was very interesting. Okay. Um, but in other things that I'll just highlight real quick is the town of Rochester's public library won the cliff one of the cliff grants for rural uh, oh. community libraries. We had our first author visit, an illustrator visit uh, last week, which was Ashley Wolf, who lives over yes, in the Leicester yes. area, and um, she came and met with all all kids preschool through sixth grade in Rochester. Um, and then each grade group will get to like pick two free books by the end of it. So we'll have a couple other visits that will happen throughout the course of the year. Nice. But that was kind of the kickoff event. Um, plus quite in addition to things that go to the town library, more children's books, there'll be more books that come to this library as well, which is great. Nice. Um, all part of that cliff grant. Oh. All part of that cliff grant, yeah. Nice. Um, so that was exciting. Um, trying to think we just finished the first trimester and so uh, our supervisory union wide proficiency based report card will go home this week for grades K through six um, and other than that if folks have questions will this be the first round of the um, that report card yes first trimester finished right before the Thanksgiving holiday okay yep I so see. it's a little bit of a revised version from last year's that went out based on feedback and some professional uh, groups that did some work around the standards. Okay, so parents have seen uh, the, this something similar to this before. Yes. It's just a, an, improved yeah. it's an improved version. It's an improved version. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Other questions? I've got a couple comments. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, go ahead, Bill. Thank you. One is. Um, um, again, I just floored by all the things that are going on at one hand. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> seem to drop in anything, Lindy, but my gosh, this, these schools are alive and well and, and, and jiving. Um, I was heartened by uh, the last bullet on the second page. We're in the process, mid-year progress, monitoring students in literacy 
we are seeing many students making large gains, pushing them closer at grade level or above grade level instruction. As we know, they have to move, the gains have to be more than just one year or they are always going to be behind. Right. And so this is something we saw in the test results of last spring, um, uh, also this fall, and that's just, that's just heartening. I, my son had problems with reading and, 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 and stuttering. And the interventions, successful interventions, made a difference in his whole life. Yeah, it's a game changer. Uh, despite his dad. And uh, <laughs> so I'm just saying that's heartening. And the other thing is, Nito, starting in January, the PICO skiing yep. program is starting. Um, it's just wonderful. You, you, you grow up in Vermont, you learn to ski, and that's a lifelong pursuit. So uh, I, I, I think that's super. Thank and, you. And uh, access to uh, the PICO um, Winter Wellness, is that uh, sponsored by? It's fully grant funded, that's and true. that's not funding that we'll lose in this turnover. It's funding we had before. ESSER funds and it's funding will continue to have that. Grant funding, that's great because then it can really be accessible yeah. to all. So exactly. do you get to go to? Uh, yes, but I'm the boot person. I'm the person <laughs> that makes sure there's just sometimes a little disconnect between those that work in the rental shop and how to get a little kid's yeah. foot in a ski boot. So, <laughs> um, that's usually where, and I'm totally fine with just being the face on the bunny hill. That's more my speed. <laughs> uh, in last year, what was the percentage that um, you went to oh, Pico went. versus stayed. Um, so it's first. It's a first grade through sixth grade okay. program. So um, outside of that, we maybe have a t total between both buildings of about ten kids that stay behind. Okay, to do cross country skiing and or outdoor, outdoor sledding, activities. building forts, things like that. Okay, great. so we do um, give every family the opportunity to sign up, and we follow up a couple of times. Um, one thing we're trying to really um, share with families is it's a privilege to be able to do this at no cost out of their own pocket. And we don't want the cost to deter anybody, but it's a commitment. Like, right. you have to give it more than one go. It may not be fun the first day. Right. Um, it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. We have to dress accordingly. And right. so that was kind of our big point of emphasis this year, that we really want families um, to give it a try and not let kids back out after one yes. session. So that was something, yes, going to be cold. <laughs> we had some great weather last year, though, so hopefully we will this year, yeah, too. That's, that's definitely exciting. I think it's um, something that skiing is not always attainable. Yeah, um, in, absolutely. For families in Vermont, I, and, I know. It's, and I it's think the great so. thing about the PICO program and why we've chosen to stay this direction instead of go back towards Middlebury Way is um, any kid that participates in this has access to the pass and the rental equipment the whole season. It's not oh. just for the six weeks. So I was wondering uh, about that. It's that quite is the um, Vermonter yes. deal, so to speak. Wonderful. Um, and it's great what they do in conjunction with Vermont schools so kids can have that access. That's very exciting. Yeah, That's it is. wonderful. So. Well, that's great. Um, is there any further? Questions or comments on facilities or heating system is the heating system is up and running. We're on pellets right now. Um, we had the official what's called the turnover meeting, uh, where we learned how to use all the graphics and the technology that comes with the system and manage it uh, remotely. On it was Wednesday here and Thursday in Stockbridge last week, um, as well as just like a walkthrough so we knew where everything was, when things need to get serviced, mm -hmm. how to stay ahead of things and be preventative versus uh, respond, and just kind of like a general overview. We're still waiting on the lighting piece to complete. They're in Bethel now, and I believe we're next. Um, so that's kind of where it stands. So it's great. We're on the right direction, I think. And are they going to continue to kind of help? with the management yes. of it for this year? <clears throat> yeah, they, uh, that was one of my big questions. So am I calling the company that installed or am I calling EEI? Like, w because I've been in, uh, my contact person, Jamie's contact people have been EEI right. the whole time. So, um, and that is not going away. Good, okay, yes. so you still have that support. Right, exactly. And they're, they've put two and two together <laughs> that like, 
<laughs> it's really, really important. I know where things are. Jesse knows where things are. Janet knows where things are. Erica knows where things are. So we can good and figure so, and, and answer questions and like what to look for. Good. So and, yeah. Uh, and they've taught you how to, or, to service like the what, what needs to be done to, right. for the pallets for right. whatever the cleaning it out or whatever. The pallets pretty simple. Great. I got one, um, but I like. Everything talks to you now. Like it's <laughs> it's quite a game changer from where we were at this point last year. Wonderful. Everything tells you what to do, when to do it. So that's pretty nice. And everything's hooked up to a generator in both buildings, so there's no worry that's about. That's exciting. Yes. So and even like if the internet goes down here, like we can still access remotely, um, like from my device. Um, at my home or like wherever there's internet it's still going to send messages regardless of what that internet status is here so okay. that's exciting as well yeah absolutely yes yeah. so just so you know i guess there's a little more maintenance in the pellet stove than there is with oil that you need to empty ashes yes yes that's when it, we had a whole separate training on just the pellet stove <laughs> right so it, it isn't as simple as a oil burner as we would expect right now but the savings yeah. is so, so we should keep that in mind with you know the, the maintenance staff um, duties are a bit increased from that it's very um, not a huge amount but there it is no one more, it's it about is one more 20 thing. minutes total to every other day right so it's very manageable right Great, are there any other questions for Lindy on her um, principal's report? Great, then we will move on to the business manager's report, uh, but she's probably in with Hancock and Granville. So we can move on to the policy committee update. Um, or not. I believe most of it was around which policies are being reviewed in which order as we go about updating things i don't believe anything new was on the table there was a little bit of talk about after things had passed through each um board what could be changed and what couldn't be changed like grammatically and if it changed meaning but other than that i don't believe there's any new policies being read through at this time okay based on what i read in the minutes i haven't can't say i have much more of an inside scoop on that one <laughs> okay Great. Well, then, uh, why don't we move on to the um, our said endowment committee? Uh, we met, and you do see that we the um, minutes are in this packet. Uh, we met on October seventeenth. Um, and uh, we had some good discussions, and we are going to continue to meet going uh, into the future. We have another meeting already scheduled for December. 15th, um, but we did have a couple of recommendations that we wanted to bring to the board um, directly at this time. And um, the first one is that uh, we reviewed uh, the names that are on the uh, physical accounts, the bank accounts, okay. the um, and the Endowment committee would like to recommend to the board that to the full board that going forward that um, the only names that should be on the financial accounts with these endowment funds would be the district treasurer, the board chair, and the vice chair. So I would look for a motion to accept that recommendation. So move. Second. Moved in by Robert, seconded by Bill. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing, yes, go ahead. I have a question. What is on it right now? So there is uh, one, two, three different accounts, and each one has some different names on it. So I could tell you that one of them, as an example, has a previous um, treasurer. It has. Um, the previous uh, backup treasurer, I guess. It does have uh, Lindy Stetson, it has Bonnie Bourne, and it has myself on it. That's from 
Wow. So um, there, yeah, and so we 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 also wanted to um, you know kind of make this as what we're also trying to do is. Uh, set stuff up so as as we go into the future, this can be something that is just known and we know who should be on it and how to roll it over when we get new treasurers, when we get new um, board members. Um, so that was our recommendation to the board treasurer. Um, and we felt that having three people on it just for accessibility um, was a better option. So, so there's, uh, is there any more discussion? Robert. I just want to say that in, we are working towards, uh, in the future, making recommendations as far as what funds and such, because some of the, some of the funds are not in high, high uh, yield accounts, and we will be making some recommendations to the board to move some of the funds around. But we're still gathering information. Yes, absolutely. I, f I feel that the committee has a number of things that they'll probably be bringing to the board. Um, because this committee has no power to do anything on their own, we need to do the investigations and bring it to the full board to make a decision. Uh, is there any more discussion on the current motion that is on the floor? Great. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. That motion passed. The next recommendation that the committee would like to bring to the board is that um, we would like to recommend that the full board um, um, makes available uh, $2,000 for the principal to use at her discretion. Uh, and so I was look, look for a motion to offer Oh, offer is not really the right word. What am I looking for? Uh, that for two thousand dollars would be available for the principal to use at her discretion from the fund for excellence. So move. Second. Moved by Robert. Seconded by Bill. Is there discussion? I believe that's the. Um, isn't that from the requirements of the of how of the establishing of that fund was that there be monies available for the the principal to use? Yes. Yes, this fund. Um, I, it can't be facilities, right? Yep, uh, so I can one? specifically um, in the documentation from this fund, uh, the, use, use this fund to directly benefit students. He does not want the money to be used for capital expenses because he believes the community should pay for brick and mortar. He is concerned that in such a small community, children don't have enough opportunities for learning and recreation. And that the most, um, uh, the person best able to determine the need and the good use of the funds is the principal. Any other? Yes. Call the question. Okay. Uh, is the $2,000 uh, available, like, is there anything all the time? Like, so, nope. The, or is it just 2000 for a certain? period of time, out of time, kind of curious about. Yep, so right now at this point, what we have looked into is we've uh, determined that we feel we can recommend to the board that $2,000 at this time would be uh, good, available for Lindy to use, and we are, we're going to continue to go back and look at uh, the funds and what's available, and it it's something that uh, we're going to c come up with a... Um, um, my one uh, uh, a, a, a protocol of, of how policy. a policy like a procedure, a procedure of of kind of how how these funds the amounts that we're going to use gets determined um this is a one time at this point not going into perpetuity right now today <laughs> two thousand okay. dollars it's for this current fiscal year fiscal year for two thousand dollars uh the committee did not actually specify that Oh, okay. So yes, you could do it. <laughs> the money is there. The money is there. We'd like okay. to offer that there's $2,000 okay. that could be used. All right. Okay, so the question has been called. So the motion on the floor is to um, uh, accept that, uh, to offer the $2,000 uh, from the Fund for Excellence be available for the principal to use at her discretion. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Great. So moved. Um, as Robert had mentioned before, uh, there is a um, one of our funds is sitting in a low earning CD, and we had hoped to um, bring that as a recommendation. But this committee actually needs to go and get the financial institute, the actual um, term that the CD is going to be at, the, and, and bring all that to the board for the full board to vote on. So. Um, Excellent. Well, thank you. And again, we will be meeting uh, again in um, December. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any comments about um, about the any more comments that they need about the uh, endowment committee. Um, I guess w one thing is we have over a half a million dollars in these endowments. Um, and if they're, and they've been, I believe, prudently, effectively managed to this point. Uh, we all, but we believe that the level of our responsibility, because ultimately it's the RSED board that's responsible for this, we should be more on top of what's going on. And thanks to Amy's leadership and digging into and finding out this mysterious thing about what and why and where and how much and, um, it's going to pay benefits down the road if we manage these funds effectively. Um, part of the, the things we're going to be checking out, um, we haven't met, is, is the management, having a professional manager. We have management of these funds. Uh, they're not all the same. And it, we think it's prudent for us to determine do we have the best manager to, um, to a, support this half million dollar of combined endowments. In, uh, I think it's safe to say we're going to be investigating that mm -hmm. and coming back. I happen to be a proponent that we don't want more than we don't need more than one investment advisor, but we need a good investment advisor, and um, to uh, to help us manage these funds. And part of that is to kind of establish and articulate what our risk assessments are as board members, um, so that and also the. The fact that these funds are meant given to the, the the school board in perpetuity, so that puts a little different buzz on things. So uh, that's where an investment manager can help us, and, and we hope to to explore that and then to come back to the full board yep. with advice or counsel or. Uh, to get your approval on where we think we should be going on that. And I think it's probably, even though we are not voting to accept the minutes, it's, it's probably very appropriate to have the minutes available yeah, in the so packet right. so that um, as, you, you know, all board members can brush up on what Marie wrote has been going on. Okay. Um, do you want to take over with the draft or of the yeah, budget, or do you want to wait for? There's a little start. Okay. I'm not sure it's going to change much if they're here. Okay. Um, so let me just flip here because my packets in a different order. Tara sent out, I believe, yesterday or this morning, this morning. and it's in your packet. Great. Um, the the budget draft, and this is all inclusive. Um, a couple of things that I'll share or highlight. So like Jamie said before he left, we didn't change um, any of the FTEs in this. So any staffing that we've talked about previously in our student support or student services budget and um, then again in general education, we haven't changed. Um, so this is kind of the whole kit and caboodle where everything is right now based on actuals. So things that we did work on um, was, you know, what do we need for supplies? What's been grant funded previously through ESSER funds? And do we, we want to make sure we keep all these curriculum initiatives going mm -hmm, and absolutely. funded? Um, so that's kind of what you see in here. Um, the other thing that Jamie mentioned, so that um, if you look on page one of six, like right at the beginning, yep. under tuition, um, under regular ed instruction, so uh, tuition to, uh, 
Vermont LEA and tuition to so 561 and 562. Yep. If, could you explain what they're? Yep. So for? this is how much we spend. This is what we spend on our um, seven through twelve students who go. The 561 is who go to public school. Okay. Um, and then 562 is who goes to private, like the tuition required for those who go to private school. So that's like the Sharon Academy versus White River Valley Middle School. Okay. Um, so that's where that 10% increase just is right now mm -hmm. um, because we don't know people's announced tuition rates and we actually haven't gotten all the tuition bills in yet this year to even um, verify. We do know where everybody is, mm -hmm. but um, so that's, and it does include our current sixth graders that will be seventh graders next year in there. So they're in that head count Great. money wise. Um, so that's something that with each draft we'll be able to get a little more fine tuned. Absolutely. Okay. It's the advantages, right, yeah. of voting in May. Um, so that's kind of one of those big difference maybe. Um, Can you makers. keep going down yeah. and tell me what all those different tuitions yep. are for? Um, so tuition to a not. I gotta go yep, non Vermont. Paper. <laughs> Can't do it. LEA. <laughs> yep. So that would be we do have um, students who uh, tuition to non Vermont LEA who tuition out. I'm going crooked and I know it. Hold on here. Twenty. Thousand. Yes. Okay. I was like, my I'm not lining up right here. Twenty thousand. So those are um, students who go out of state, but we don't pay more than the annual tuition, annual okay. state allowed tuition yep. for. Okay. Okay. Secondary out of state, private. We don't really have. Okay. Um. And then that. Uh, oh yeah, tech on behalf. I was wondering about. So tech this schools. is that vocational so money we, that like we get but then we also pay out and it's on a rolling average. So when a student enrolls in a vocational program, mm -hmm. right, it's a six semester rolling average. It's not the same as just an annual tuition. Right, right. So it's, um, it's no, a funky amount. Why, why would we have to pay that? Because aren't we paying that when we pay tuition to our we kids to go? We don't pay them, so we do not pay. So if a kid enrolls in a vocational school, we don't pay the full tuition for them at at like so okay, Middlebury, so, so like Middlebury, the Hannaford Career Separate Center is separate from even though it's right next door right. to each other, separate from Middlebury High School. Okay. So we don't pay a full time enrollment to Middlebury High to School. Middlebury High School is we, part of we our. We pay part of their. We pay their vocational enrollment and then a sum of their. Okay. Sometimes you can be part time and it just depends on your program. Okay. Does that help? That, that does because I thought it was like I, no, I feel like the it double feels dipping. like it's a double dip. I yeah. agree. All right. Great. Okay, and then same w the tuition for tech. So, what's the difference between that and the paid on behalf? So, we'll Five, have to 67. double check this with, yeah, with Tara. But I believe this is like where money comes in on your revenue sheet. So, if you look on your revenue sheet, you will see. Mm. Tech to it under revision or uh, revenue from state and federal oh, sources. Okay. Do you see that tech tuition on behalf? So tech tuition on behalf is where we just just were. Right. Which is, and so it's usually which is about the same. Right. I mean, we're it's kind of like you have to budget for it, even though you get some from the state. Okay. Um, I don't know the why behind that, but I just know the way. Okay. So so five sixty six we receive most of it back in yeah. revenue. <laughs> exactly. but what about five sixty seven? Tuition, tech. That should be our vocational students. Yes. So kind of the same as five sixty six. Just we don't. There's no revenue. I Maybe believe we'll so. Ask. We should double check that okay, with Sarah, but I'm pretty sure okay. that's true. And then five sixty eight tuition public EAE. LA is within the SU. So I was. That is something new. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not seeing the note for it. So. Okay. Um, that. Mm, and I'd almost think that they're talking about if our students go to the, right, it might just be the to, district. Right. So that is a different. large. In, okay, so all of these. 
increased or a 10 percent increase right now so that whole section from 561 with the exception of 566 from yes. um, 561 to 568 that's all at a 10 percent increase Temp right now okay and that's what we'll be able to get pared down pretty well as more bills and things come in now um the number of students that we currently have versus what we're projecting mm -hmm. for this budget what do what's the difference so there? i think it's a difference of about two to three when you figure out who graduates yeah. and then who's coming up it's two to three and that's a yeah. major increase then it is but what we have to keep in mind is we did um add some more granville hancock students so hopefully it's offsetting in our revenue side right does that make sense yeah no i was just um i'm really was just looking at this expenditure yeah, this yeah, tuition yeah. expenditure no, of how it is much is increased large, um class of what will be seventh graders next year from Rochester, and they're all Rochester residents. Right, but it you, just comes in phases. Yeah, <laughs> but you think that there's only two? You, you said there's only like two, maybe two right. compared the to to the, the current. Is about two to three. Yeah. Yeah. So it really is just that that ten yeah. percent increase mm -hmm. is that's driving that. Yeah, okay. it's not enough um, body weight. Like it's not a change in number of kids right. enough to okay. make. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 568. Uh, yeah. Um, we can look at it, $129,000, and go, oh my gosh, we, we, we didn't pay that before. Or does that mean that um, in prior years, um, students went outside of the SU and we paid them on these other numbers, and we're counting on them staying within the SU? So while we are supporting, we're supporting schools and districts within our supervisory union. A little bit of both. Um, and so I think it would be helpful to, at some point just to clarify that, because I'd like to think it's so good news, and, uh, but right. I don't know. Well, so that's why when we do our town report, what's so important is that spreadsheet of where everybody right. goes to school. Yeah. And, and that's gives, really nice. Right, yeah. that seven through, you know, number of kids, seven through 12, right? And then it yes. breaks down how many kids are in each building. Um, and, and that really, that pie chart also, that shows that a majority of our budget outside of salaries and benefits is, is tuition. tuition. Yeah, it, but <clears throat> it's a difference. If we start a trend, and I, I have a sense that we are, that uh, we're going to have fewer people tuitioned out of the SU and I mean, within the SU, hopefully. and if we can start that pattern and that behavior and that assumptions, then that can build on itself. And um, while we're still paying because our district only provides education K through six, those tuition dollars are going to SU and those SU funds help pay for the overhead of SU, including the superintendent and his team and everything else like that. Um, and it also includes, uh, inc improves our cost per student. So to me, this number is very important. And, if you could just get clarification down the yep. road, I mean, I'll be talking about this further. It's but just, it's, it really sounds good. I, if I that's assume where we're that um, it's probably 561 just, is where our current students right. that are attending the White River Valley Middle and High School, which yep. was projected to be seven for yep. this year, their tuition is is in that uh, 561 right. I think this is line. Based on some newer, yep. and and they've broken it out maybe just to help identify the, um, difference. the difference of what can be. Um, kept in SU and it's um, but we are, it is I just wanted to clarify that when we are paying the tuition for the um, for White River Valley uh, middle high school students we're paying White River Valley district we're not paying the White yes. River Valley SU that's that's cor that's it correct all, but that also allows them to to pay for the overhead and also helps them support their um, educational. Oh, it absolutely. Um, I, I just um, wanted to clarify who we're paying. And, and, and saves taxpayers money yeah. within the SU. So, yeah. um, and to the extent that they can do, have more resources to do a good job, that should also help uh, the trend to keep our student body within the SU because we're darn good at what we're doing. Yeah, and it's a continuum of the same. You know yeah. programs that we're we're yeah. we were have here. That's the uh, portrait of a graduate. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. So those are kind of the bigger chunks. Everything else is um, like some increase in supply things and books. Uh, but for the most part, those are the larger pieces. Right. Because it 
Yeah, that that increase is uh, mm -hmm. four hundred thousand. Yep. If for that um, one one oh one general yeah. education ed, ed instruction line. Yeah. Um, I do see a lot of minuses on the column two on other columns. <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you wanted to specifically point no, out to uh, us? On the expenditure side, there's nothing in particular. I mean, it's very minimal increases um, outside of health insurance. Okay. And, uh, and right, the health insurance, insurance is, is 16 point. 16 uh, 16 point five 16 yeah. and a half percent yes which is a, a large increase yeah for sure um, so overall the budget is up 11.74 percent if you look at the very bottom line but. and I was just in you know a big no, another number that's a new number yep um, in staff training and I just wasn't sure if that was in some of our revisions before no um, where are you two two one three so page uh, page four okay. uh, it's staff Good training training and it's expensive. tuition benefit then I don't didn't know yep. if that was um, someplace else in the budget prior or what that would be Yep, so that um, previously would have been under, uh, nope, nope, where is it? Um, under that um, tuition benefit under regular ed, so if you go on to page one, okay. 1101, 250, line item, 251 okay and so it is up but that's per the master agreement so yeah how many spots you have to how many credits you have to budget for excellent so that's on teachers continuing education yes. um for their licensure other training opportunities but they're each um provided per the master agreement the equivalent of six credits at the evm rate okay which and is so, two graduate so they're all typically. um they're like college level courses yes graduate level okay yeah that's that's really exciting. I think that really, um, Absolutely. I think that really can benefit our students. Really, um, I think we saw that, um, and I'm not sure what grade she was teaching last year, but she was taking. Uh, she's no longer with us now. She's teaching a younger class, oh, and yeah. they had just a huge growth. Yeah, and I believe it had a lot to do with that. Her learning being, more. yeah, her being yeah. learning more and, and being in. So, I agree. Okay. Is there any questions? I know it's kind of hard for the people on line. Uh, <laughs> we're doing virtual. Hopefully, you have a copy of it in front of you. Um, does anybody else have any specific questions on specific lines or overall? Uh, concepts of the budget as presented. And then just a reminder, if you go to page six, there's still the fund transfer into the capital improvement um, fund that set up the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District at that last line item, uh, 5390. 5390, okay. And then you'll see some of um, that under 5020, some of that is from the work that we did this summer. Okay, I was, that, that was wondering. Those lease payments and things like that, that's where those are. Okay, these part of this is our lease <coughs> payments for EEI for yes. this incredible amount of work that yeah, we got done, exactly. which is a great deal. Um, so those will, will we'll continue to see those in the budget for, that, for many years to come. I can't remember the the timeline on okay it, but, but yeah, yeah that, that's a just I don't want I know um, it's not that there was a bond right like right that's just a, it's our a lease sell point it's our lease agreements that yeah we didn't use our capital improvement um, funds right. or and grants for to pay and it was over well over a million dollars. a million well, over a million dollar project and for we're both buildings that's wonderful yep that's huge yeah so and I think that's a sell point and something people might ask questions about mm-hmm and I like that we're 
of this budget, um, we're continuing to put $65,000 away in our capital. Yeah. So I just wanted to share, uh, the, those are kind of some other bigger line items. Yeah. Yes. But that's it, important, that's a building block. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Okay, uh, does anybody have any more questions on the expenditure budget? Otherwise, we can move on to the revenue budget. Uh, and if you want to send emails with more questions as you have more time. Yeah, you definitely want to. We only just got tight. this this yeah. morning, so. Um, I know it's tight. It was tough to, to, yeah. to sit with it, but we. Um, it is December. Um, it is nice that we don't vote until May. So that does give us a little bit more time to let the numbers settle out with the state, with the yield, with um, tuitions. So, yep. welcome back. It was a good timing. Yeah, we, we're just finishing up the expenditures. Oh, you guys are already on that. Rolling. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we just. Really, we're finishing the expenditures. Nobody really had any more questions. I don't know if you had anything specific you wanted to point out on the expenditure just side. Just know right now, and, and maybe Lindy hit this, that we're just using that 10% placeholder yes. on the tuition right now. We will dial that in a lot more by next month. Yeah, that, and like, okay. Uh, great. Then do you want to speak to the revenue budget? Yep, so if you go to the re revenue, um, a couple of things to note. One, there's no um, proposed balance carryover from our surplus in this draft of our budget yet. So that's okay. something that so we, could change. Yes. And we will we have. The, yeah. we, the auditors are close to being done, so okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, so that's we'll very good to know. Yeah, that makes a big difference. <laughs> our we, sense is it'll be a chunk higher than what Tara originally forecasted. She's always pretty conservative yeah. with those, not wanting to overstate. Right. But it's looking like that we'll, we'll definitely have some funds that could be contributed. Okay, great. Um, so that's probably the most important yeah, that, <laughs> to know on there, especially <laughs> when you get ready to go to the tax sheet. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but there is pretty, what we haven't done to this is also gone through with our actual um, we just kept our revenue the same around pre-K, well, excuse me, around our K through six students. So we haven't updated that. Okay, um, for the incoming yeah. tuition, the right. tuition so revenue. The tuition as a whole on both sides is something that we'll hone in. Um, okay, so. Um, update. And we'll do that based on that who's actually enrolled. Right. Well. Okay. Um, right above that, the um, interest, is that interest on our TAN? Is that? No. Oh, it's interest on our TAN. And that, we're, we have so much interest because we didn't have to access, access as much funds, so we kind of had it in the bank for longer. So that's right. a nice. Um, our cash flow has been healthy. Yes, we're in a much better cash flow place. Yeah, which is. Was, Nice to get. It's kind of like free money, you know? Right. It's great. Okay. Yep. Uh, but other than that, rentals have stayed right around the same. I can't think of anything. Okay. We haven't spent a lot of time yeah. on this. I, I have not touched have, these. I things. haven't either. Okay, yeah. It looks like, for the most part, it was really it just does pulled look over like, from. Um, Tara updated the revenue from state and federal sources. So okay. it's a little more on that. And based on tuition. And based on tuition. Yep. And of course, uh, notable that the we no longer have the small schools grant. Right. Uh, but there is within the act. Yes. There's there's something in that equation about. If you look, we spend. You get you can't get small schools waiting and merger incentive waiting, we still get receive a merger incentive waiting. Okay. Um, so our pupils count more. It, it's a better it's a better for us with the waiting than, than the small schools grant. 
it's so early on I can't tell you that okay. for a fact, right? I okay. can tell you that but that, we, that the small schools grants gone across the state now and right. they increased the weights of students. But to if offset it. if our weights are worse than what our small schools do we do the small schools instead? No. Okay. Small schools grants gone. Okay. I thought there was something in there about about that. Okay. No, that is whether it's better to get the small schools weights versus the merger incentive fund weights. Oh, something and totally different. And the agency okay. will decide that. They okay. give you that, whichever one's more for okay. your district. Because you, you had small schools and you had merged, and so they still take that into account. Okay. You'll see it on the next page when we look at your pupils. Yeah, okay. Have, um, has the Stockbridge trustees um, voted? In, in they vote uh, the end of the month. This month? Yep. Okay, so they've been asked, and they're, mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah, I'm no longer on the trustees. Yeah, I've met with Kim the other day. You have? Yep. Okay, great, because that's really important. Great, that is wonderful. Okay, well, that doesn't seem like there's much to be said about the revenue, but no. at this time, I, it seems there's some updates that it will need to be made for us to really dive into it um, further. Okay, so should we move on to the, um, the estimated tax rate sheet? And so, again, we don't have updated CLAs yet, right? Okay. So we're using last year's CLAs. I don't, I have what your long-term weighted average pupil would have been from FY24. Okay. They have not provided us the FY25 yet because they just got done doing our child count, our, yeah. our average daily membership. So that number will be coming out by your next draft. We should have it here in December. Remember your yeah. equalized pupil would always change sometime in December, same right. place. I don't have that updated figure yet. Okay, so, so what we're using is is your long-term weighted average. So you can see that your last year your equalized pupils was at 180.84. Look up at that top box. Your long-term weighted average now is 325.43. Right. So we did increase our weight, which was supposed to provide us more tax capacity, right? Mm-hmm. The thing that we have. Um, not going for us this year is that if you look to that right hand box, you'll see that the yield last year was 15,443, and the tax letter last week dropped it down to 9,452. What a drop. So that's a big drop. And so that will get dialed in over the legislative session, which is what Bill was talking about. And, you know, I would say one of the things right off the bat that um that i i raised earlier is if you look at that vermont non-residential rate that they're projecting at 1.4420 just under that yield amount mm -hmm. you'll see that that only went up from 1.391 last year so they can adjust that to increase some funding for the ed fund which would then possibly increase that yield okay okay yeah and i think that's a as it was quoted in Vermont Digger, they've got the legislature that has some arrows in their quiver uh, that they can play, and that's just a logical one. We're not uh, we're not sticking it to anybody, but we're saying we want yeah. the state to pay their fair share. Pay their fair share. Um, and in fact, the matter is, the quality of education directly impacts the the value of their property. So you'll see. I mean, if. If nothing changed, meaning your pupils didn't change, the revenue of the budget didn't change, that the expenditure part of the budget didn't change, and the CLA stayed the same, and there was no 5% cap, which there is going to be a 5% cap on um, our tax rates, that the tax increase would be 22 and a half cents at Rochester and 25.7 in Stockbridge which is about a 14.86% change. You yeah. heard, that, uh, if you read what was coming out of the governor's office last week, he was projecting 18.5% increases. Um, and so we are, we're not at that level. Um, but what I would say to you is, is that there are still, 
you voting in May is going to be a very good thing. Yeah. I, I would tell you I am very, very anxious <laughs> for my districts that we need to have budgets put to bed in the next six weeks because yeah. I've never felt like I've had more unknown yeah. data. Yeah, well, there just seems um, like there's so many moving parts. And there's a lot of moving right now. parts right now. And yeah. so, again, Lindy and I and Tara will meet. We'll dig in on the expenditure budgets more. We'll dig in on that revenue budget next month um, and know that, like, this to me is our base. And I hope that we can continue to improve the outlook as as we move toward February when you would look to adopt. Okay. And like you said, the CLAs haven't been updated either. Um, and when does that come out usually? We usually have that in December as well. December. Like middle okay. of December. We're part of it. We're very early in the in the month. Like yeah. It's so <laughs> you know, frankly, my my districts that meet the third week of December, they will have, have some their of this data okay. that we don't have yet. Uh, one thing that when I Amy yes last year the CLA letters came out on December 23rd okay oh, oh, oh. a Christmas present yeah 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 thank you uh, one thing when um, and I had asked in the, the act the meeting um, was how were they going to um, identify all the students and what their weights were how do they know that this is an English second language You're person. They, how do they know? <laughs> so, you know, what about with like um, income sensitive, you know, poverty? Of how do we know if they don't fill out any paperwork? They're either direct served or they fill out the paperwork. M meaning that through the state, they are on something yeah, through the state. They're right, Medicaid they eligible or. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so any, uh, if somebody, yeah. Just does like not our, and yeah because I worry about families that are kind of right on the edge that do maybe qualify for free and reduced lunch but they choose not to fill out that paperwork mm -hmm. um, and in this situation it actually is detrimental to our well in, this and title funding and yeah. you name it it's so important to so much funding yeah mm -hmm. Um, one thing we'll have to do for next year is report uh, household income at places where our students are arriving tuition. We've never had to do this before. They asked us to do it with three weeks left in the window. We actually got it done. And this is a, like a trial run. But next year they'll require it. So, so students who are at TSA yeah. would not normally be in this building filling out the forms. Right. TSA may not run a meal program. So they, they also are not collecting the forms. So uh, one of the answers is to uh, have, as part of the tuition process, the household income form. Mm -hmm. That hopefully people fill out. <laughs> right, so I mean, that's my concern about this, is that there, I think there's a lot of potential for, um, you know, to slip through the cracks. Yeah. You know. We have seen an, a bit of an increase in those free and reduced lunch forms than previous years, so mm -hmm. that's a good sign. But it definitely is not what it could be. It right, and I wonder, I mean? yeah, and, and and now it's a, you know, it has, like I said, now it's like directly affecting our our weighted pupils, and so, um, you know, I'm trying to think of ways that would be um, a way for people to feel comfortable right. with I used to accessing, or to fill out those mm. forms. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Elaborate. Yeah. Have there been efforts to, for um, different ways of um, outreach to, to families to, I mean, such as phone calls or that sort of thing? Or? Yep, there was quite a push both at the supervisor union level and local level at the beginning of the school for free and reduced sure. lunch mm -hmm. forms, both online and hard copy. Been sent home, it was emailed, it was. Robo called. It was right, and yours is specific to the K through six, correct? Whereas we, the seven through twelve, still affects. Right. Us we have as not well. done any re outreach this year. For so seven, seven through twelve. 12 no. for, we, right. We'll start that next year. So if a family, um, if a family who is going to um, a seventh through twelfth grader is going to another district, and they fill out that form for that school for free and reduced lunch. Does that come back to it gets back to us? 
because they are part of our equalized pupil. That's what Ray was just talking about. Right? So I, I think you're asking about, in this case, if the student is attending a public program. So Correct. we do not report them. They would be reported on our behalf with those eligibilities. And I'm assuming the state is going to use that information to, as part of the long-term wait because they're not asking us for that. They're asking us about independent schools. Yeah, okay. So they're, they're using the student's address as like as Rochester's their the town, then they're going to they should be reporting back to they're our district. Yes. Yeah. Seems pretty complicated to me. Uh, no one's not foolproof. I mean right. at the SU level when we've been talking about the data manager, yeah. this is part of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like Ray has this is all Ray has done over the last five weeks is try to make certain we're counting all of our students across. Absolutely. Even just counting them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? On top of making then all these other f factors. Right, right? because there's Because we rely on the other 50 schools to help us with that. Mm -hmm. Like we don't get, yeah, it's a dance. There was a, there was a student, uh, not this district, but attending another public school in the state, and they had been reported with a different funding source. So that, that receiving school was reporting them, they were being counted and given zero ADM credit, and we, they didn't show up on our list mm. just because the receiving school picked the wrong code about who was paying for that education. Interesting. And so you have to work backwards and know where the students are, the invoices come in, and you, we're either reporting them attending an independent school or the public school is reporting them on our behalf. So it, it, uh, it's important. You got to work in both directions. Mm, well, I th see it's important to have somebody's eyes on that. Absolutely. And a lot of that. Absolutely. It's all coordination with the building too, right? Lynn, right. Lynn actually knows where these kids are. Uh, we started off with a bang. <laughs> Amy, as you may remember, five or six years ago when our account was wrong, and then yes, the right, right. <laughs> so we have very exactly. yeah a tight. That's my confidence that. is, is Between, level is <laughs> no, I hear you. It's why we know where every good okay kiddo is. Between Erica, Janet, and myself. Great. Okay. All right. Is there any uh, further discussion on the um, estimated tax rate? Yeah, I, I yep. su a suggestion, um, and it's based on the fact that this whole page reflects. A very early estimate, yeah. very early estimate with this, all sorts of things in the air for what the tax rate, school tax rate may be for Rochester and Stockbridge for one third of our taxpayers that pay the school tax based on their property value. And I think it's still the biggest secret in Vermont that two thirds of the people that pay their school taxes in Vermont pay their school tax based on their income if their income is $95,000 plus or minus or less. And I guess I'd like to suggest through you, uh, Jamie, that that this, we have about, about a third or space on this page, very powerful page, can articulate an estimate based on um, income sensitivity and the income sensitivity yield, how things might be looking for these two communities here. Um, uh, going back to my presentation at the last annual meeting, people paying their income sensitivity by their school tax based on their income sensitivity since the merger have had a reduction almost of 3% a year. Those are my numbers, plus or minus. And those paying by the property tax value have had an average increase of a little over 1%. And meanwhile, inflation has been considerably higher than that. We're looking at a, a tough, tough season. And so I'm not saying that these numbers don't matter, even if one taxpayer has to pay it. But I do think it helps for our taxpayers to understand that, um, that uh, the vast majority um, are going to have a different impact. And if we can share that information uh, throughout our districts, I think when we're at the point where we need to tell and explain mm -hmm and educate, we're in the education business, we can, we can, we have some numbers here that we can work with. So that's, that's my, that's my um, suggestion. Excellent. Thank you. That does make sense. Uh,
Any more uh, questions, comments on the draft three? Um, Tara, I did, uh, we were going over the um, section with, in the expenditure budget of the tuitions to all the different entities. And I just wanted you to clarify in um, the regular ed instruction 1101, the tuition for tech 567 and 568 tuition to public LEAs within the SU. If you could just give me a, a brief description of what those two lines are. So when the universal chart of account changed from the agency of education, we have to classify districts that we're paying tuition to within our supervisory union. So in your case, that's Red River Unified District. Okay. Separately from other public Vermont LEAs. And then the tech center tuition or tuition tech, that is what you pay your six semester average to students who are enrolled in vocational technology centers throughout the state of Vermont. Okay, well then can you go back to the line above 566 and tell me what that one is? Above 566? No, five, no, 566. What was that? I would like to know what 566 is. So that you will see is both an expense and a revenue. And what that is, we do not pay the full amount of tuition for a vocational education. The Agency of Education through the Education Fund pays a portion of that. So the tech paid on behalf of is what the Ed Fund is paying to the vocational centers on your behalf. As so it zeroes itself out on both an expense and a revenue. As part of the set six semester rolling thing too? Yep. Okay, it's all part yep. of that equation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, is there any further questions on the expenditure, uh, on the budget draft three? If not, we will move on. I don't see any questions. Let's move on to uh, community survey update. Yeah, uh, so we have a digital survey ready to go out. So we will get that shared out electronically and um, we'll have hard copies in case folks want that. Um, and we'll also put some information out in the communities at different posting places as well. So we'll be able to share out the results from that in time for our uh, board retreat. Okay. Just kind of waiting to set a deadline based on yeah. that data. Well, we set a deadline till we kind of. So it hasn't gone out yet, okay. just because I yeah. wait to put deadlines. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. And I figured it would be good to have yes. for the retreat. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, move on to 8 3 board goals. 2324. Uh, JC and uh, Bill were working on this, so I'll let uh, them take it away. Yeah, we, we had a, a great meeting. Um, we, we tweaked um, uh, the uh, draft, the initial draft, some more. Uh, we think it's, 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 it's something that's goals that are worthwhile pursuing, goals that we think that we can achieve. Uh, even though that they're uh, they're going to be challenging, and um, so I don't know, um, Justin, if you have something you want to say, or we just open it up to questions, comments um, uh, before we go forward on this draft. The changes, uh, basically, the additions are in bold, um, and uh, just the highlights. Goal number one: it's. Last year we had a, a very um, strong academic performance goal that um, that uh, uh, goes with the SU's performance goals, and this year um, we're going beyond that to talk about measurable goals um, and attainable goals for social and emotional. So we would be t would be this goal would be in, in concert with. Um, one of the superintendent's goals for okay. this. That's on that. On uh, number two, we've added strategic plan because a budget we need and want, um, how do we define that? Well, one of the best ways to define it is to go back with the SU strategic plan. And uh, that's one of the measures. And if we fall short, we should be aware of it and analyze that and 
whether or not that's a, the way we want to go. Um, uh, also under financial management, we've added under budget that we can afford uh, the major uncertainty due to Act 127 and upcoming yield impacts, and Jamie's been hammering us on this. These are huge uncertainties that we've talked about a lot tonight. We think it should be in here and uh, help remind us of what what's going on. Um, the new one uh, is last year we had an enrollment and tuition growth goal, um, but we didn't really tie it directly to enrollment. And uh, we think that um, increasing enrollments uh, can lower our cost per student and help us um, get the job done um, if we t tuition out uh, um, kids beyond the SU, it's going to have the reverse effect. I was looking at Ray's report that he gave the SU and us last December, and it showed that from 2017 to 2022, I believe, that um, our enrollment, SU enrollment, was roughly the same, but the, there was an increase in tuitions, students tuitioning out of our SU, and that was over 100 students. And if you take 100 students and you multiply by an average cost of 20000 a student, you've got yourself $2 million for the whole SU. So there are huge dollars here. And so what we're trying to do here is to focus not only on marketing and thinking about how we can tell our communities and our parents what's important and how well we're doing, but we can look for other opportunities to see how we can more effectively impact parents, families' decisions to join our educational community, that's recruit, and also retain these, these kids so they stay with us um, not only K through three, but K through six and K through 12. Um, and, and, and so that's, that's kind of new. The other thing is that we had under th three capital facilities, we had capital facilities within the financial management um, section. And we just thought it made sense. It's so important of, of maintaining our facilities that we should have as a separate bullet. So it's not, uh, necessarily new, it just uh, stands by its own in a separate goal. And then finally, to highlight under board governance, and we've got some things here we've already talked about having our own handbook, our own calendar, and the importance of having retreats. We thought that should be articulated. And the other thing is that um, there's a big vote coming up sometime in 2024 about the future of the high school and the repurposing of that high school. Um, that's going to have a huge impact, um, whether it's a yes vote as far as potential assets, community assets for the whole valley. If it's a negative vote, it's going to have a potentially really negative impact on just our ability to focus on all the educational goals that we have going on if we've got to figure out what we're going to do with this building because it's ultimately ours unless it's the town's so we thought that was worthwhile to uh, highlight in under board governance and both justine and i are available to answer any of your questions about what we're trying to do here one thing i wanted to bring up um if i can to add to what Bill said um, in this overview is that we also mentioned that it's it's one thing to have all of these goals and all of these details within the goals but one what we want to bring forth tonight and you know moving forward is an opportunity to hear feedback from the from the board so then we can add another section which is how and what we're what we're going to do what we're actually going to do about it each year um, so it's not just you know setting this set of goals and without any specific way to kind of attack it right now 
So that was something that I just wanted to piggyback on there that, you know, one thing that's missing is, so how? How are we gonna, this year, how are we gonna market our school to increase enrollment and keep enrollment? Um, so as you, as you formulate your questions and feedback, um, that's something that we wanna for, do next. I think that's wonderful. Yep. I think that's that's great. That really puts uh, boots on the ground. Yeah. Great, Robert. Go ahead. Uh, just with regard to your enrollment and tuition growth, uh, growth. Um, I understand marketing and such is is important, but the other thing is is uh, um, in attracting. Um, kids to stay within the SU, you really have to compare what the SU is offering compared to surrounding schools. Absolutely. You're absolutely, and that's why we really need to focus on this. And it's beyond marketing, you know, we're doing everything and it's a targeted market, but also is the kids within our schools are, what are we providing? What are we, what, what's the competition providing? Do we need to do more relative to what they're interested in and what the competition is offering. That's part of the whole thing under um, under that bullet. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's where we think we're going to need uh, big time SU support. And one thing I wanted to mention too is, is marketing isn't just like putting stuff on Facebook. It's also like um, targeting what is actually going home in backpacks and what parents are actually seeing. Parents are really busy. They may not be going to events. Um, they see, you know, papers and things coming home. And back. I, that that's one way to kind of hold on to to folks and keep our enrollment up um, in a way that's not as like, you know, let's sell the school kind of thing. It's, it doesn't mean just marketing like, you know, sales, but it's just presenting a picture that we that we are intentionally creating yep is there any other uh, comments questions for uh, on this Okay, well, being none, I guess, um, uh, was this, were you guys looking for a motion to accept the uh, mission and vision? Well, it's actually uh, the board goals is what we were um, looking yeah, for. And yeah. we're, we're not. <laughs> Yeah, we're not. The, we're not I, touching the goals. Uh, excuse the me. The mission and vision. vision yes, and, that, at this point, we were actually that was uh, slated for in our retreat to to review that. So, yeah. so we were just looking for a motion to accept the board goals as presented tonight as our goals for uh, twenty the twenty three twenty four um, year. Well, I'll move. <laughs> okay. Second. Uh, Bill's made a motion. Robert seconded it. Is there any discussion? Great. Being no discussion, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Passed unanimously. Said that wrong. That's great. Stumble <laughs> right over that. <laughs> okay, great. So um, board goals. Great. Let's move on to uh, eight four okay. tax. Uh, before we move on, can I just um, so it, it's my understanding that we're just gonna meet again and work on the how piece, or is that you know with no, we haven't gotten any feedback, so we just run with what we're doing already and bring more back. Is that the plan, or you know what's next? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody agrees with the work that you guys have done, and I think the how is is a great um, place to start. Now, whether you want the, you know, you guys want to meet and start just formulating some ideas, uh, or maybe even bring a specific portion of it to the retreat. Um, 
that would if that works for you guys i would say that yeah you run with it i do think okay. it should be yeah, I think it would be good for us to kind of hash out a, a, a how section to these goals and then um, focus on um, a little more talk during the retreat, but also the mission vision and how yeah. that ties in. I think that's a great tie it all together. Um, uh, that, I think that would be great. Good. You think the mission and vision could be part of our marketing once we um, work on that a little bit more? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, great. Uh, eight, four tax impl implications since the merger of the district's actuals versus initial projections. And uh, Bill did a little uh, work uh, looking back at uh, our original projections of of what um, since our what if emerged district our taxes would look like and um, it was really great news what he found yeah it's um, we have articles of agreement and uh, and we're our merger this year is going to be for five years and uh, one of the nuggets in it was uh, in the appendix was projections of what the school tax rate would be with or without the merger and it showed that the projections were that they would we'd be saving money if we went with the, the merger. What they didn't express or over was that, yeah, we saved a lot of money. And if you look at those numbers, um, percentage-wise, it's, it's just huge. Um, and to me, this is a message that we need to just talk about and just get across. It's more than money it's the quality of education and opportunity that our every one of our kids get to the maximum and and we've been working on that with the huge leadership of uh, jamie and lindy's and the team and we're making huge progress there uh, the other thing is are, are the taxpayers getting the, the benefit of this merger not only the quality of the education but the cost of that education and um um, according to, and this is pre-CLA before the, um, which is a good way to because compare. we don't have any control about that. It shows that um, other than the first year, which makes sense because th there's initial startup cost with the merger, um, we've done phenomenally well, and I wouldn't be surprised that that might be the case throughout the SU. Um, and I think it's a story to be told, understood, um, especially going into this this tough budget year right oh. yeah the projections were down at one last year was 20 27 percent uh, is that correct compared to the projection for fy 23 um our actual uh, uh, tax rate was down almost 28 percent below what was projected what was yes. projected wow. yeah that's great Thank you, Bill, for yeah, pulling yeah. those numbers out, and I believe uh, we could. Uh, that's great. Um, okay, let's. Unless there's a question. Uh, sorry, well, yeah. no, I just wonder if there's anyone on the board, or, or I could do it on behalf of the board. It just feels like it could be a good um, letter to the editor, communication in the Herald. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's anything, Bill. You're interested in writing or. Let me draft something yeah. and let me share it with. Uh, yeah, feel free to share. Yeah. So you I can, mean, help I can me on write that. something, but well, I do you're think, busy up to the year. I'm well, and I also think sometimes it, I do think our public those. I do think some folks may read something from you. They see a lot of stuff from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I worry sometimes folks don't always. Read let me. It, so. I'll, with uh, your okay. Yeah, uh, I think that would be I'll great. I'll draft something and then um, I, I don't think it should come from me. Quite honestly, I think it should come from our chair. Okay. And, uh, but I'll be more than happy to draft a, uh, something for your consideration and your consideration. Yeah, that would be great if we um, kind of work collaboratively I think that's on that. A, a great idea. We've, we've got to do a good job and then we've got to, people have to understand yeah. um, it. And so this is, and I, I would think there's social media things that you could Absolutely. Take that and run with it, um, which I'm uh, not an expert on at all. But uh, let me give that a shot. Thank you. 
great. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to uh, our book club. Did you know Tara's business manager report? Oh, I'm. You're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I no, did right. not realize it. Forgot we <laughs> skipped over it. All right, Tara. Sorry to keep you here. You should have spoken up. Um, we're going to loop back to the seven three to the business manager's report. So you all have my report. Uh, you can see what's happening in the business office throughout the month of December. It's a busy time of year for us, along with building budgets. We are in the midst of our administrative and procurement review with the child nutrition program. They will be out at Bethel and Stockbridge campuses to do physical monitoring on the 13th and 14th. So we'll be out doing that next week. And then uh, the child nutrition monitoring team will come and meet with me and go over my roles and responsibilities that I do on behalf of my role as the school food authority. And then the last part that's not on my actual report because I got the update after my report went out is in regards to your fiscal year 23 annual audit. And we are in hopes of having the first draft financials um, end of this week, beginning of next week. So we'll have those to review. They are coming back here on Wednesday to do the supervisory union single audit and they are auditing all of the ARP ESSER funding, as well as our 21 Century Grant and um, our okay. Title I and IDEAB. Okay. So we will go through that, and that's all required based on the federal auditing single audit standards. So that's my business manager report, and I'll answer any questions. Is there any questions for Tara on Thanks her report? So. Okay. Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I hope everybody got their book. <laughs> and I thank you for putting the. Um, <laughs> That's good. You like that on that stationery? Yeah. Just uh, roll it. Well, <laughs> Nice. Well, I'm, thank you for putting it in here because it's nice to keep track of what the, yeah. the date is and what we're reading. So um, I'm excited to read this book. It's, it started off really good. I'm, I'm excited that we're going to, you know, hear real specific scenarios that have and situations that uh, boards have have, have, done. Gone, have done. So I, I, I'm excited. I underlined a whole bunch of, of things. Uh, so. Yeah, I thought it had a really interesting um, uh, forward from an educator from Australia who does not like the idea of having school boards, whether they're for uh, a whole supervisory area or a town or a city, whatever the case is. And I wanted to quote him because this book answers I think very effectively in our prior book and what we're doing now and we did last year to disprove what the forward language is. But here it is. Many of the chronic obstacles to continuous sustained improvement of student learning and performance in schools can be traced to the dysfunctions of local governance structures, including highly fractionalized board, boards, members, members more interested in building their political careers than in learning the complexity of the work, instability and in leadership caused in part by the short electoral cycles of school boards in comparison to the longer term work of school improvement, and seemingly arbitrary shifts in the temperament, focus, and purpose of school boards accompanying shifts in board membership. And I, I read that and I'm saying, does that reflect us and I don't think it does. No. But I also believe that it's not only because we've got six wonderful people on this board and we're working with a wonderful superintendent and administrative team, but we really believe in what we're talking about. So I, my question to, I was interested in your comments, what do you think we're doing right to, to counter this abysmal 
um, take on school board governance. And that's what the author tried to highlight, I think, in that first chapter or two. Robert? Um, you do have to look back at history of what this board looked like uh, not that long ago. And it was fractious, and it was, it was, um, I wouldn't say dysfunctional, but it was, it, it had its problems on focusing on education. So, you know, that's, um, so we have gone through a cycle where they, we're doing things right, but hopefully we can continue that yeah. in the long term, but it's, you know, thing, things can come up, crop up. You know, it's uh, a lot of it will be um, uh, contingent on being able to attract um, uh, um, school board members, especially you know young, uh, younger generation. Yes. You know, because we're gonna we're gonna die out, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> But I, I, you know, I, I think the, the message of the first chapter is, is you know, what we do makes a difference, makes a difference, good or bad, you know. Yeah. You know, and that's that we are so focused on on you know, student achievement rather than you know tri trivial budget items <laughs> is uh, is is um, to the, the students' benefits. Absolutely. Other comments people would like to make, uh, share with us on the on the board about. Yeah, in reading this, uh, it, you know, like the other book, it, it kind of let, helps me like realize what we are doing right, you know, without like, oh, like, oh, yeah, I guess that is a good thing we are doing. And just the fact that we're continuing to to go over this stuff really set is, is the foundation of of the the, the good work we're doing and obvious you know, it's more obvious in reading that first chapter is like oh you know we're, we're doing this work to to look at ourselves in a different way and 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 try to educate ourselves and and how to better govern and and by doing that we're already a you know a more effective governing body so yeah good work just for that reason. Excellent. Um, one thing that struck me, I don't know what you, is that it, the author, and this was in the introduction, talked about changing the, the mindset of school boards relative of vis-a-vis -vis their superintendent. You know, the traditional way is that um, we oversee the superintendent, and that's part of our job. We have to make sure that the superintendent is following um, our guidance and and and, and lead, um, and uh, and carries out those roles effectively. But the author also talked about and changed it. Said that the board role has changed from overseer of the superintendent to co leader with the superintendent. And I thought that's very interesting. We still have that oversight role. We, in, we uh, evaluate um, his record and uh, accomplishments and goals and everything else, but we're doing this together. And I think one of the powers that's making our boards, I like to think, effective and contributing to the overall effort is that we have that, that, that sense of co-leadership um, and I happen to believe that uh, we need to not forget that and we need to keep that strong um, as we go forward. So that's one of the things I learned. Thank you. This is, this is a good book. Okay, next, uh, January 8th, we've got Chapter 2, Building a Foundation for Student Success. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, let's move on to uh, board retreat planning. Yeah. Did everybody bring their um, yes their calendars so we can plan um, 
another retreat where we're going to specifically look at the mission and vision statement and then also uh, look at the, these goals that we've approved tonight and, and de dive into them a little deeper as to the how. Um, we we're going to accomplish that. So if we, we definitely want to look into the new year, I would say. Um, and uh, does, we did it Saturday last time. Saturday no, work okay like for that. people? I don't I like know how other look. folks feel. A little. And I don't want to speak for Lindy, but I, I think it gives yeah. fresh. It's not like the end of a school day. I, I yeah, just feel I, like it's it, not the end of a yeah. work day. Yeah. It's um, great. Um, my January calendar is quite a, wide open for the weekend. So, um, oh, so I was like, I, I mean, what does, let's see, what does the 20th look like? Um, I think the 13th uh, is a long weekend, so that would, yeah, and the Martin Luther King on the 15th, so I if don't want to take that one if one? people want to go away. I have one, I, and it's probably the 20th, but then I looked at my husband's work schedule, so it's probably not going to happen, so we're good. <laughs> you, well, so if you, you have, have something, with, I don't. I mean, the no, twice, I don't. We were trying to go away to watch a basketball game, but he's there's no way he's leaving work, so. <laughs> okay, because I mean, we could look at the 27th. I sure no, don't want to, like... We were trying for the 20th, but he hasn't looked at his work schedule. I did. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't matter to me. Okay. We're not going. <laughs> you're, you're not going. Better. Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, <laughs> We've I been together long enough that I know that you he's just not know. leaving work. <laughs> okay, he's what? in trouble is what Lindy's trying to say. Yeah. Well, I, like, <laughs> so kindly asked, and then he was like, it just depends what else is there, and he listed, like, three sports, and I'm like, yeah, okay. we're not going. Okay. So, it's okay. Uh, what does the 20th look, f of January 20th, this is Saturday, what does that look like on, uh, JC, what does that look like on your calendar? Uh, it's great. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay, how about Pat? How about Patrick? I'm, I'm good with the 20th. Okay, Cynthia. All right. Easy. Let's go. With it. Let's do it. What time? Here. Yep, we'd be here. Right. Okay, so we can do it in Rochester. Uh, what did we do last? We did nine. Nine. I don't know if that was good. Like nine yeah. to one ish. Nine to one, and have sandwiches or something. Yep. Great. Okay, January 20th, 9 to 1, uh, our board, another board retreat. Yeah, and we can work on a draft agenda yeah. and bring it at the January meeting. Okay. Like That's we did last idea. time. Yep. Nine. Okay. Um, any new hires or resignations? Nope. Nope. Great. It's good this time of year. Do we have any public comment? I am seeing none. Uh, can we yes, change our next that. meeting? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, that's okay. I can come back. Let's cancel. Okay. So, our next regular scheduled meeting was for January 1st. I would uh, like to change that. <laughs> so, um, does the 8th work? The, the, the following Monday, the 8th? For, yeah, for some reason I don't have any of... Because I think it was Tuesdays that didn't work for our board, right? This, there, this board there's board. No, like, not a lot of board meetings on the calendar for January yet. They're probably just not on there yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was just say, it looks very empty. So the 8th? So does uh, January 8th for our regular scheduled meeting at 6 o'clock in Stockbridge, January 8th on Monday, does that work for everybody? Robert's a yes. Cynthia's a yes. Justine? That gives us yes. another yes. week to dial in Sorry, on budget, too. Perfect. And Patrick? Is it yes? Okay, perfect. Super. Great. So we'll have our regular uh, meeting Monday, January 8th at 6 o'clock at the Stockbridge campus. And uh, future agenda items, well, there'll be an updated draft of the budget, of course. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jana. You, you get a social emotional data report. Okay. Yeah. You say hi real quick? Uh, I know. Hi, Hi Hannah. <laughs> oh, wow. 
What a sweet. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, and of course there'll be an update from the um, endowment committee as well. There'll be some policies, if yep. possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, if there's any other agenda items that uh, crop up between now and then, uh, email me and Jamie, and we we'll, uh... Okay. Um, great. If there's no further business, I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Bye. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Yes.